Hello and welcome to my channel. I am PK Mohan, your host, and I'm here to guide you through in the world of surgeries and how to be mentally prepared for them. Have you ever wondered what happens in the operating room? What to expect for that day? And I'm here to give you this mental preparation, what to expect. This channel is for patients who are about to get surgery, also for medical students, as well as the operating room staff. Any question, you are at the right place. Hello everyone. Today's topic is inguinal hernia repair, open surgery. In this video, I will be covering everything from checking into hospital to leaving the operating room. This video is for patients, medical students, and operating room staff. I will cover everything in this video. If you still have question, drop it in the comments and I will reply to you. Thank you. Okay, now today is your surgery. You go into the operating room area, wherever you are sent to by your doctor office. You check in, then you will be going to pre-op area. The pre-op nurse is going to ask you to wear a gown, hospital gown. Once you are ready, they're gonna ask you questions like what's your name, your date of birth, your any allergies. And every time you meet a new person in the operating room area, they're gonna ask you the same question. So don't get annoyed because that's very many check that they have to do to make sure you are the right patient in the right location. Now, once that is done, you will be getting whatever the pre-op medication was ordered for you, heparin or whatnot, any kind of medication, you get it. Once you are close to getting into the operating room, see the operating room nurse is going to show up and the nurse is going to ask you same question all over again, what procedure you're getting and uh, your name, your date of birth, your allergies and a specific question, do you have any metal in the body? Which is like knee replacement, hip replacement, screws, rods, any kind of metal in the body. The reason behind that in the operating room, they put a sticker on your body. If it's on top of that specific metal, it's gonna heat up. So the reason they asking you about this metal, so they don't put that sticker close to that specific implant. Now, once that's taken care of, you will be going into the operating room within a few minutes. The anesthesia probably going to take you. And once you are going there, and if you're still feeling a bit anxiety, you can always ask your anesthesia provider like, hey, I am not really feeling well. I'm just kind of like, very, I have this anxiety and I'm sure they have something in their back pocket to help you. There is specific medication that they can give you in pre-op area if they are allowed to, then they'll just give you that medication and you'll feel pretty happy or you know it'll just ease you up. So don't forget to ask that question to your anesthesia provider. And now you will be getting into the operating room. So that's the next step. Okay, next step. You have arrived into operating room. So you will come in the stretcher. You will be aligned to this operating room bed. Once everything is aligned and the staff tells you to move over to the bed, operating room bed, you scoot over. Once you scoot over, if you're not able to scoot over the operating room, we have everything available to move the patient. Once you are on this bed, there everybody's gonna be all on you like a pit crew. Somebody be putting stickers on you, somebody be putting um, the blood pressure cuff, somebody be placing the uh, SCDs on you. These are the sequential boots. They will circulate your blood during the procedure, just like I'm massaging your legs. So they go on your legs and uh, that's based on if you get leg like, surgery or not, then you don't put them on. But if you have uh, any other surgeries, they put the SCDs on. And your head will be by the anesthesia and uh, you will be sleeping in five, six minutes that give or take. Okay, for this surgery, you will be supine. That means you'll be laying flat. So since you'll be laying flat, your arms may be out or in, that's based on the 
surgeon. What happens then, once your arms are out, we put these egg crate, they are foam, we rip them and we put them in the pressure area, like under your elbow, shoulders, under your heel, anywhere there may be cause of pressure injury, based on however long you're gonna be in the procedure for. There will be arm straps and uh, leg straps, so there might be use these egg crates underneath all those uh, pressure area and under the straps so you won't get any marks. So be very careful about your, uh, your surgery. So every single person in the operating room is caring for you. Here's the egg crate. Okay, now you went to sleep. And uh, right before we can start the surgery, we might have to take some hair off your body based on what procedure we are doing. So we have the razor, clips, and the tape. Once we take the hair out, the tape help us to pick it up. So it's very quick, we have it. And if you need a Foley, Foley catheter, we also have it available, only take us three, four minutes and it's in your body, you won't even know it. And we take it out right uh, before your procedure is even ended. So we don't want you to be peeing all over the operating room bed, so. So, enjoying the video? Now, I would like to tell you that I am a published writer and I have written not one, not two, but over 30 mental health books. I only write about mental health and related topics. And my books have inspired many. The link for all my books is below. Please go and check it out and support me. Now, back to the video. So another preparation before your surgery can actually begin is prepping your body. So the prep, if you are getting any kind of surgery, it needs preparation. So that's chloroprep, or it has the sponges in there, and we can use HIPAA cleanse based on if the doctor wants HIPAA cleanse or they want betadine. So we have everything in the operating room available. If we use the chloroprep on your body, we have to wait three minutes after it's applied because the chemical in it may cause fire if it does not get dried. So by law, we have to wait three minutes after it's applied before we can put anything on you. So here is the prep. Next step, we have to put a bobby pad on the patient. So the bobby pad is a sticker, gets onto the patient mostly right thigh, left thigh, or uh, by the calf or scapula, flanks, doesn't matter as long as it's away from any metal. So if the patient have any kind of surgery like knee replacement, hip replacement, anything, don't put this pad on their, on that specific area because this pad will make that metal hot and you don't want to do that. So this pad gets away from the metal, but it gets on the patient. So it's for the Bowie. There's the Bowie pencil right there. You can see it. So this is for the cautery. So cut and coagulation. This was originated in 19th century. William T. Bowie. That was the name of the person who invented it. Here's the Bowie. Okay, now, you came to the OR, everything is good. You went to sleep, anesthesia did their job. Now, they put the drapes on you. Once they put the drapes, you will be completely covered and uh, based on the part of your body which needs to be exposed. Otherwise, everything is going to be covered. I'm going to show you this picture very shortly, how it's going to look like. All right, drapes are on. You're sleeping, let's begin the surgery. Not quite yet, it's time for a timeout. Timeout is very, very important. Once we call the timeout, everybody stop doing whatever they're doing. At this point, this is the last check for this patient right before the doctor gets the blade in their hand. Now, 
So the timeout covers the patient's name, date of birth, MRN number, which is medical record number. What's the fire risk in this case? It could be uh, based on the chloroprep has been used and the oxygen mask is there and a Bowie which has some sort of a fire, uh, the lightning to it that it can cause a fire, which actually not, uh, happens in the operating room every now and then. So what's the fire risk? If there is a blood product needed, do we need uh, x-ray in the room? Do we, is this patient have the SEDs on and working? The Bowie pad is on. What sort of antibiotics this patient got? Any, um, any sort of uh, question and concern that could be covered at this point if there is a representative available for any sort of implants. If there's implant in the room, if is uh, needed the implant. So all these questions are answered during this timeout. Everybody freezes and they just answer if it's asked this question. Once the timeout is completed, no concern was mentioned. At this point, the doctor can hand it the, the blade and then they can proceed with the surgery. Otherwise, everybody is hold off. So timeout is very, very important. I'm sure you're going to be curious about what kind of equipment are going to be used for this procedure. But if I go over each and every equipment and thing that we use for this surgery, this video is going to go really long. So I made a specific video just on equipment. You need to see it as a patient. You need to see it as a medical student and you definitely have to see it as an operating room staff what specific items will be used for this procedure. The link for that video is up there as well as below. So look for that. So after the surgery is completed, we have to dress the wound. So there are so many options, whatever doctors like. Sometimes they just want to staple it. Here's a stapler, sterile or sometimes they want to use a steri strips and mastosol right here and there is zero form gets used or simply glue a lot of doctors love this thing glue thermobond and we can also use uh, curlix or the ace wrap based on whatever doctor surgeon's preference. So have it in the room. All right, so now surgery is completed and you are waking up because the anesthesia did the extubation. At this point, the tube is out if the tube was given. Now you're getting awake, not completely awake, but just about you're awake. Now the OR staff is going to gather up and move you from the operating room bed to the stretcher or the hospital bed. Once that is done and the operating room nurse will call the post anesthesia care unit and they will give the room whatever the PACU room you will get. And now you will be shipped off to PACU. And now the surgery is completed. I have a lot more of these videos coming on based on what surgeries and what you're getting. So you gotta like and subscribe and please share because that's how most people will get these videos who are definitely need to see this video. So please like and share, I request. Thank you so much. This is how a normal operating room looks like. And uh, there's your operating room bed, anesthesia work. That's the table for sterile setup. This is called Neptune. This is for the suction of the blood. Anything for pneumo right here. SCDs connector for the Bowie. This is the bear hugger. Bear hugger is mostly used by anesthesia where they keep you warm. There are all the stock stuff. 
the gowns, the gloves, and small things. That's where people chart everything gets done in the operating room, printer, whatever. If there was a picture taken from inside the body, and here's the timeout board where we put the patient information and we use it as a timeout. Operating room, everybody.